Hey, Phil Play from BadAstronomy.com here, and I'm doing a mini Q&BA session. I just wanted to test out some software, but uh, I thought I'd do it with a real question. So I opened up a Hangout on Air on Google+, and you can find me on Google+, where I frequently post uh, all kinds of things that may be not the kind of stuff I post on the blog and maybe too much for Twitter, but I like doing stuff like that on Google+. I can do a Hangout on Air there where it's a live video chat and I can take questions from people. And I got uh, a great question from Rolando Perez, who is in Temple, Texas, via evidently Chicago. And he asks, it's a good question, if we know a meteorite came from Mars, how did it leave Mars and when? Now, it turns out that uh, meteorites fall to the Earth all the time. We actually plow through about 100 tons of material every day. Most of it burns up in the atmosphere, but if the pieces are big enough, or if they come in at the right angle, or there are other factors involved, they can make it all the way to the ground where we can find them, and we find them all the time. Now, some of these are weird. Chemically, they're, they're weird. They're not like the other meteorites that we find. And it turns out that some of these have been positively identified as having come from Mars. And that's amazing when you think that something came from another planet. Maybe, you know, most meteorites that come from asteroids. Asteroids whack into each other, shrapnel flies off, and eventually they hit the Earth. But Mars is a planet. It's a whole planet, and yet we get pieces of it here on Earth. Now, uh, uh, very briefly, we know they're from Mars because when you slice the meteorite open, you do this very carefully in sterile conditions, you will find sometimes that there are uh, glass uh, bubbles in them or little cavities in them. And you can see them, and, and, and you can sample the gas that is inside. It's, basically, it's an air bubble that formed inside this rock when the rock formed whenever, billions of years ago. So if you can take a sample of that gas, you can uh, check it chemically. And it turns out that the, basically the chemical composition of the gas that we find in some of these meteorites matches what we know is on Mars. And that's really awesome. Uh, it's, it's one of the few places where we've actually been to and been able to sample things firsthand. We've sent rovers to Mars and things like that, so we know what the atmosphere is made of. We find it in these little uh, uh, bubbles trapped in the rock, and we can positively identify these meteorites coming from Mars. Um, they're kind of funny looking, too. I can show you one here. I've got a picture of one, and uh, this is called the Nakla meteorite, and you can see it's green and kind of crystally. Uh, a lot of these Martian meteorites are green. It has to do with the, uh, the crystals in them. I, I believe it's olivine, which is a, uh, a simple mineral, but it's a lovely green like that. Um, that's not a positive identification of a Martian meteorite. Uh, there are other meteorites that have olivine in them, uh, or that are green, in fact. Uh, but that is one thing that helps you know that you're seeing a Martian meteorite. So once you've identified these things as, Mar uh, as being Martian, how do they get here, and when did this happen? Well. Uh, there are some famous Martian meteorites, like the Allen Hills meteorite. This is one that was found in Antarctica. And uh, they're, they're, they're really cool uh, to find in Antarctica because the ice basically over, over long periods of time circulates. And so a meteorite can fall, be buried in the ice, be very pristine, and then come back up a long time later. And they're very easy to find because meteorites are funny color. They're green or they're black. And they're sitting on the ice. And when you're in Antarctica, you know, and there's a lot of ice, and there's a black thing sitting on it, it's very easy to find. So how does it get there? Well, this is actually a little bit of a controversial topic, but basically, there's an asteroid impact on Mars. Some asteroid comes in, Mars has a thin atmosphere, so um, it doesn't take a huge asteroid to be able to penetrate Martian atmosphere and get to the ground. When it hits the ground, boom, it blows out shrapnel, debris, and it excavates a crater. Now, uh, Mars is smaller than the Earth, and it has a much lower surface gravity. So it's not as hard to eject rocks into space from the Martian surface as it would be, say, from the Earth's surface, which would be very difficult. We also have a thicker atmosphere, and that makes it hard. Uh, so in fact, uh, when you do the complicated physics of this, you find that you can, in fact, eject debris uh, off the surface of Mars and into space. In fact, the Martian moon Phobos has craters on it that look like they may have been created when debris from Mars was splashed up into space and the moon plowed through it. And you see these lines of, of craters. They're called crater chains. So uh, when did this happen? Well, for some meteorites, we think uh, they may have actually, the, the, the rock would have formed billions of years ago when Mars formed, or maybe later, uh, because Mars used to be geologically active, maybe even as recently as a billion years ago. So rocks would have formed then. Then a meteor, uh, an asteroid or a meteorite comes down, smacks into Mars, blasts this thing into orbit, and then they, they, they move around in space 
uh, maybe on an elliptical orbit around the sun until the Earth smacks into it, and then it falls to the ground. So the rock probably formed, like Alan Hill's meteorite, formed billions of years ago. It was probably ejected into space millions of years ago, circled the, the sun for a few million years before the Earth plowed into it, and it fell to the ground where it stayed for a few thousand years. Now, I'm giving you very rough numbers, but that's sort of the scale of these things. Um, probably these meteorites won't stay orbiting the sun. You know, and I've got to be careful. Meteorites after it hits the ground. Before it hits us, it's just a rock from Mars. So it won't circle the sun for billions of years because at some point the gravity of, of Mars itself or the Earth or Venus or something will change its orbit. So generally, the lifetimes of those orbits aren't that long. It's not billions of years. It might be tens of millions of years. And so uh, there you go. So again, formed billions of years ago, ejected millions of years ago, uh, orbited the sun for that time, and then slammed into the Earth. And, and uh, uh, there was a Martian uh, meteorite that just fell uh, over northwest Africa last year. And it, it came in. Uh, they picked it up, they, they found it, picked it up, tested it, came from Mars. So that actually has only been, it was only sitting on the ground for days because that was actually seen to come in. They went to the site and found those, those meteorites and they're pretty sure it came from that fireball that was witnessed. So that, that had only been sitting on the ground for, you know, hours or days. So they can, be, they can be picked up after they're thousands of years old or hours old. But, you know, you pick them up, you bring them in, you test them, you find out they're, they're Martian and then you've got a piece of Mars sitting in your lab. You don't have to spend $100 million to send a probe there. You got it for free. So that's really cool. So, you know, every time you go outside at night and you look up and you see a shooting star, that's usually a piece of a comet, but it might be a piece of an asteroid. If you see a really bright one, make sure you report it. There are places online. Say, report meteorite into Google and see what comes up. There's the International uh, Meteorite uh, Organization, IMO, and they will, uh, you can report where you saw it. And uh, they can, if they get enough uh, reports, they can triangulate and figure out where it fell. And who knows? It might just be a piece of an asteroid, which is already pretty awesome, or it might be a piece of Mars, which, like, rocks.